In this presentation, I'm going to clarify a few points on polymer chemistry for your A2 organic notes. Now, the beginning of, or of polymer chemistry there, you'll see, as usual, our specification, and you'll see that what they're talking about here is mostly condensation polymers. There are two definitions you'll see, as usual, from the SEA document at the front page. The two definitions of, of polymerization is what are called addition po polymers and condensation polymers. So addition polymerization involves the addition of molecules which have a carbon-carbon double bond. And we covered that when we were doing our AS2. So we'll do a brief revision of that, but look back on your AS2 notes uh, for a little bit more detail on this. The condensation polymerization that we're going to look at, again, involves molecules joined together and this time there's a loss of water, that's where the term condensation comes from, but in some cases you can also lose a hydrogen chloride molecule as well. So our definitions formally, condensation polymers are polymers formed by the elimination of small molecules such as water or hydrogen chloride when monomers bond together. And quite often we'll find that these condensation polymers are biodegradable, and a biodegradable polymer is a polymer which can be hydrolyzed by the action of microorganisms. So, brief revision of AS. At AS, remember, we saw the idea of, of addition polymerization. This was where we started off with our monomers that had the carbon to carbon double bonds, so things like ethene, and they would join together to form big long chains which uh, contain the, none, none of the double bond, the pi bond of the double bond had been broken and then they had poly in front of them, so ethene, lots of ethenes put together, made the polymer polyethene. To represent it, quite often what we did was we started off with the monomer, and then the polymer is simply the pi bond taken away from between the two carbons, that's broken. That leaves each carbon there able to bond one more bond this side, one more bond this side, so we extend those bonds, put a square bracket around it, and then whatever number of molecules we use, that's repeated n times. So n molecules of ethene will join into a long chain with that uh, repeating unit repeated n times, and that's our structural formula for the polymer. The table that you can see there, you could pause the video and then practice doing the polymer structure from those. Hopefully it's fairly straightforward, and in a moment I'll reveal those. So poly propene or polypropylene is basically this monomer with the pi bond taken away and then the two bonds extended the bracket n times. Polychloroethene or polyvinyl chloride, this monomer used to be known as vinyl chloride, so this uh, would then become polyvinyl chloride and again you can see in exactly the same way the pi bond taken away and then the two bonds added and repeated n times. Polytetrafluoroethene is basically the tetrafluoroethene monomer with a pi bond taken away, repeated n times. And polystyrene, again, the monomer styrene is a bit like ethene but with a benzene ring. In this representation, we had it with the uh, delocalized uh, pi ring shown there. In this one, the drawing package I was using could only do the I c the calculate type structure with the alternate double and single bonds, it doesn't really matter which of those you use to represent the benzene ring. Now, the addition polymers tend not to be very biodegradable. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. They tend quite often to have non-polar bonds, so they don't attract molecules. Uh, they would act as nucleophiles, for example, on water, and therefore there's little reaction from that point of view. And also the bonds that are polar tend to be very strong, things like carbon to halogen bonds and so on, and they're not easily broken. Now, it means the polymers are very useful. While you're wanting to use them, they're very, very stable. So an object made out of polystyrene, uh, for example, could last for many, many years while it's being useful. The problem is when it's finished with that if you dispose of it as they've done for many, many years by di uh, just dumping it in landfill sites, it doesn't decompose. So these molecules are not biodegradable. So in terms of condensation polymers, there are two types of condensation polymers. The first are what are called polyesters. And the idea of that is it's a long chain molecule put together by ester linkages. 
Now you remember esters are between acids, carboxylic acids, and alcohols. So to turn those into a polymer, what you start off with is a dicarboxylic acid, a, acid, a, a molecule that has an acid group at both ends of the molecule. And you react it with a dialcohol, again a molecule that's got two OH groups at the end of the molecule. When the two molecules come together, water is eliminated. So for example, you could take say the OH of the acid and the H of the alcohol, and then that forms this, this is what's called an ester link. And for each of those molecules, effectively two water will be eliminated, one at this in the middle where the two molecules meet, but then you've also got these groups at either end of the new molecule. And what they could then do, for example, at the end of this dicarboxylic acid, another alcohol could join over here. And then once that alcohol is linked on, there'd be an OH over here and an acid could add. So you can continue this on constantly. Acid, alcohol, acid, alcohol, acid, alcohol, all along the chain. So to represent that, usually what we do is we look at the repeating unit. And to draw the repeating unit, what we do is we take away the water and form the ester bond there. And then at either end of the molecule, we do the same thing. So for example, we took off the OH of the acid there to make that. So we've taken off the OH at this end and then extended that bond. And then that's the beginnings of the, or the end of the repeating unit there. Then you go through the repeating unit. Then at this end, we took the H of the alcohol to make the water. So we take the H off there and then extend that bond, which could repeat on. And this then becomes the repeating unit of the polyester. The other type of polymer, condensation polymer, is polyamides. And this is done in exactly the same way. So again, we start off with a di acid, dicarboxylic acid. So there's a molecule there with six carbons, and then there's two acid groups. So that one would be properly called hexane, six carbons, and then dioic acid. So you'll see, for example, if we had six carbons and one acid group, it would be called hexanoic acid. But when they put, put two acid groups on, they keep the E from the corresponding alkane. So hexane, dioic acid. And no need really to uh, put the number in there because when you've got an acid, that has to be the end of the molecule. So one, the hexane uh, would be the, the one carbon, that would be carbon number one. And then if you go along the chain, the other acid group has to be at carbon number six. The other molecule that we get would have two amine groups. So you'll see again, we've got six carbons in the chain here, and then we've got our NH2 group here and our NH2 group here. Now, this time we do have to put numbers on because the NH2 group could in theory sit in different uh, places there if you made the molecule in a different way. So this one is again based on six carbons and then two amine groups. So hexane, six carbons, amine groups, amino, two of them die on the first and six carbons, one six, so one six diamino hexane. The molecules to form the polyamide, then these two groups come together and you can see this drawn in a little bit more detail down below and they've taken away, they've condensed that down so to show the two notations this, so you can either draw the molecule out in long form or sometimes to l lower the amount of writing you have to do is you'd put CH2 brackets four rather than drawing out the four CH2s. But for the two groups to come together, you'll see there's the dioic acid, the hexane dioic acid. And again, you can see the OH group that's gonna be lost. There's the one six diamino hexane and you can see the H is going to be lost. So when you circle those two bits, that will eliminate water. And this time what you will form is you will form this C double bond O NH. Now, if you look at that structure, that's a little bit like the bits that linked our amino acids together and polymers and polypeptides and so on, or proteins and polypeptides. And that is then what's called an amide link. So hence, these are called polyamides. Polyesters, the one that we will show here is the making of a PET, or it's commonly called PET. And PET stands for polyethylene terephthalate. 
and that you may think is a strange uh, polymer but if you've picked up a water bottle um one of those you buy for a, a pound or two they quite often are made out of pet or uh, fizzy drinks bottles and so on are quite often made out of it so it's a very very common polyester now to make it just two polymers uh, to two monomers the first one is benzene 1,4 dicarboxylic acid so benzene's that structure two acid groups COH either end of the molecule the alcohol is ethane 1,2 diol so again you'll see because it becomes a diol we keep the full name of the alkane so two carbons ethane and then the two OH groups either end of the molecule and when those join together basically again we take off so you could take off the H here and the OH so we're just swapping over the way that we do it doesn't really matter at a level the, 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 the details of what comes off uh, when and when we put those together we get a repeating unit that looks like this so let's quickly go over it so we start off with the benzene ring so that's the benzene ring from the uh, benzene 1,4 dicarboxylic acid we've got C double bond OO so we've taken the H off that We've got C double bond O, O at this end, and again we take the H off, and then we start the brackets. There's the beginning of the repeating unit. To link on the alcohol, we've put the CH2, CH2, that's those two bits there, and again we put our bracket here, and the O's outside, and I left that on just to show that we are just taking on the way that we've done it there. We've taken the OH off the alcohol here, and we've taken the H off that. Now, you could also have a repeating unit where you had the bracket here right through to there. So, again, as long as you get a consistent repeating unit, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistently with the two molecules uh, at either end, the same as you do in the middle. The elimination from this bit is going to be for water. So, we've got a water there. And then if we're asked to do a balanced equation to represent the polymerization, uh, I've highlighted up there, by the way, that's the ester linkage. And quite often, whenever you're drawing structures, that, draw that out with a C double bond O, o because that would be something that they would quite often give you a mark for, or it would be something they would look for that you, you've drawn the ester linkage correctly. So the equation. So to do an equation for a polymerization, you need a large number of these molecules. So you see we've repeated the two structures down here. But this time we've put N in front of them, so a large number of those. Again, I've drawn the repeating unit of the polymer. We've got here, and it's repeated N times. The water is given off. Now, why have we put 2N plus uh, 2N minus 1 waters here? Well, each time you've got two molecules like this, they effectively lose two waters. So if you look, that joining together of the two molecules to make this linkage here, that'll have lost one molecule. And then what we've done at the end to show that repeating on and on and on, we'll have lost another water. They'll have lost the H and the OH here. So the second, so each set of two molecules loses two water. The minus one is if you're being absolutely correct, because if you form a long chain at the end of the molecule, this one and this one won't be lost. So at the end of a big, big long chain, there'll be a COH where we won't have lost the H and there'll be a, a, at that end the end of the linkage will be an OH where it hasn't lost the OH from that. So that's what the minus one is. Uh, it's probably being a little bit more precise than you really need to be, but we'll put that in anyway. So uses of polyesters. Polyesters are very common things. Um, you will have seen them in terms of fibres and things like that. So school uniforms are mostly made out of polyester and clothing and things like that. They're used to fill duvets. They can be used to make belts and uh, and tires the cords that make uh, the, the tires much stronger a uh, rigid polyester can be used for making bottles and so on and you can take a quick read over there there's huge amounts of it made every year uh, there's permanent dipole dipole attractions between molecules so that gives them strong intermolecular forces so that means that both fibers and films and uh, rigid structures can all be formed this diagram is just to show different ways that they're put together, so don't be worrying about learning it in terms of that, but it just shows the rigidity of the fibres and the adaptability of the polyester. So you can have a, a, a fibre, which you could then spin into threads and then sew that, which is why we get clothes out of it. You can put the polymers in two dimensions, two directions, and they can make films. So many years ago, there used to be uh, video cassettes would have had 
uh, polyester films that, that ran those. And then more modern application there would be the bottles for drinks and things like that. The polyamides, the formation of polyamides. Now, if you followed the polyester being formed, polyamides are formed in a very similar way. And the repeating unit that we do is very, very similar as well. So you'll see, for example, here, this is uh, an example of nylon 66. Nylon 66 is so called because the two monomers both contain six carbons. And that was one of the first polyamide that was made. Uh, it was deliberately searched for by scientists in New York and London, hence the name nylon. And nylon 66 is sort of the classic uh, nylon that, that is made. Now, it starts with hexane dioic acid, so similar to what we saw with the polyester, uh, before, one of the examples we had before. So six carbons with two uh, acid groups at either end. Then the diamino hexane, so six carbons in the NH2. When we put them together, we lose the components of water. So this time it has to be the OH from the acid and one of the H's from the amine. So C double bond O NH, you'll see that that link being shown there. And then the rest of the structure, so CH2, 4, C double bond O, again, we've taken the OH off this end to put it down in the repeating unit. And then we link on here the amide, so NH, CH2 to the 6, NH. And again, we've taken the H off this, and then we've drawn the brackets in there. So our repeating unit is basically those two molecules with the water eliminated from the, to link the two molecules together, making that an amide link. And then the same thing's taken off the end. Again, for each two molecules, we'll lose water. So 2N water, and then to be absolutely cor uh, correct, minus one to uh, take account of the last uh, water molecule there. In the lab, that's, uh, that nylon 66 is an industrial process. In the lab, it's difficult to show using those chemicals. So sometimes you will see that this chemical is used. Uh, this is one uh, that has got, again, six carbons. But instead of being an acid, it's got a chlorine at the end of it. And if you go online and search, you can see the nylon rope trick. And you'll see basically where two sets of these chemicals, this one dissolved usually in a uh, emissible organic solvent like uh, cyclohexane. This one dissolved in water. And where the two meet, they form nylon. And then you can get a little grip of the nylon and then keep drawing it out and drawing it out as a thread, a huge, uh, big, long thread. And the reason that that works quite well in the lab is because these are very, very good leaving groups. The chlorine comes off easily from this. The hydrogen comes off easily from this. And this time we eliminate hydrogen chloride in the same way that we saw uh, water being eliminated. Again, the polymer, you can see that this polymer here with the chlorine taken away, so the C double bond O, this with the hydrogen taken away, so NH, so there's our amide link. And then at the end of the molecule, we do the same thing, is take off the chlorine from this end of the uh, acyl chloride or the diacyl chloride, and at this end, take off the hydrogen of the end of the diamine, and then put the square brackets around, repeat n times. And again, we get hydrogen chloride eliminated from that. If you want to put it in in terms of a, of a balanced equation, put N in front of the two molecules and then 2N minus 1 HCl. Polyamides are commonly used in clothing. So nylon is the, the most commonly or the most widely known of the polyamides. Uh, but they're present in lots and lots of different clothes and so on. Carpets, uh, nylon can be used, for example, for the bristles of toothbrushes. Uh, you can also make Kevlar, which is a strong polymer. It's used in bulletproof vests and things like racing drivers' clothes and so on, uh, and lots of pieces of sporting equipment as well. So there are other polyamides that are used. Now, the reason they link this in is because of those ester and amide bonds, these tend to have polar parts of the molecule. Now, in general, these polar molecules attract nucleophiles, things like water, and therefore tend to be hydrolyzed when present in nature. So microbes and things like that can act on them and can basically biodegrade them, break them down when they're left for a long period of time. So these tend to be more biodegradable. And the reason is because the ester amide bonds are polar. They attract the nucleophiles. And if you compare that to the addition polymers we talked about at the start of this, 
Uh, polyesters will biodegrade over a number of years, but they can also be recycled. So, for example, things like drink bottles are taken, uh, cut up in, and made a more fibrous form, and then made into things like fleece material. So, again, there's that definition that's appeared a couple of times in the note there, a biodegradable polymer, a polymer that can be hydrolyzed by the action of microorganisms. Now, the last couple of pages are some applications. And if you followed what we've done, you could pause the video and then have a go at trying to write equations to represent the polymerization of the different molecules. The first couple are hopefully straightforward ad adaptations of what we've seen before. And then there's a couple of applications where we've given you a slightly unusual molecule and then we've given you the polymer and asked you to work out the polymer, uh, the monomers from that, the reverse of it. So pause the video, have a go at the four examples, see what you come up with, and then I'll go over them now in a moment. Okay, so with this one, uh, we'll start off with our benzene 1,4-dicarboxylic acid. So I've drawn it down below there. There's the aiming this time instead of having carbons in between it's got a benzene ring again my drawing package did it with a calculate type structure but you could have had the delocalized uh, pi ring inside these benzene rings here and that would be i uh, probably even better than that one when they link together we, sorry we use n of each of these when they link together we get the repeating unit like that so i've taken the h of the acid again so you can see that H has been removed and then put there. We've drawn the structure there. Uh, we have taken 